Anderson's coming. Richardson can't escape. A sack for Will Anderson. He's now got seven and a half on the year. Texas Swarm! I'm going to keep saying this to begin every single segment. After a 23-20 win over the Colts, your Texans are 6-2, 6-0 in the conference, 3-0 in the AFC South, and they have the tiebreaker over the only challenge in the AFC South, the Colts, after having officially swept them yesterday. They basically have a three-game lead on a team that's 4-4. Four and four. So there's a lot of things to be happy about. That said, there's a lot of things that have still yet to be cleaned up that we've been seeing for over half of a year. Specifically, the offensive line, the inability to protect C.J. Stroud, an offense that's very inconsistent, that can't score touchdowns, that gets stuck in the red zone, that shoots itself in the foot. And by the way, they're down another wide receiver. Nico Collins already out. Now Stephon Diggs seemingly out indefinitely. But there is something that they are doing incredibly well this year. They are really getting after the quarterback. You're finally seeing some results from Daniil Hunter. Will Anderson is one of the top sack artists in the NFL. And yesterday, against a team with a quarterback who is pretty good at avoiding sacks, they sacked him five times. A little bit more. This is NFL history. Over the last decade, the lowest completion percentage with 30-plus attempts. It was Josh Allen a couple of weeks ago against the Texans. It was Anthony Richardson on Sunday. 30% and 31.3%. One game, oh my God, this quarterback's a disaster. Two games, you got to look at the defense and say the defense is playing a large part in that, even if those two teams are limited. And then think about this, at an NRG stadium with people who arrive very late and with people that leave early, perhaps before the near Rosencopter-esque incident when C.J. Stroud tossed it to Joe Mixon, bounces off his chest, a Colt player recovers it, falls to his back, I guess got touched, gets up, runs, takes it back for a touchdown, Colts had a lead for five seconds, call gets overturned. Even despite that, take a look at what the Texans have been doing against quarterbacks at NRG Stadium. Caleb Williams, 174 yards passing, two picks. Trevor Lawrence, 169 yards passing. Josh Allen, 131. Anthony Richardson, 175. This is put out by Will Conkle from Fox 26. No quarterback has thrown for more than 175 yards in Houston this season. And while I think yards are generally a meaningless statistic, to hold somebody under 200 yards passing in today's NFL is pretty damn hard to do. They have done that in every single home game. They've been really impressive at home and on the defense side of the ball. Daniel Hunter, you like you said, you can really feel his impact growing in a major way. But Will Anderson just looks like he is a different animal this season. I, I mean, he like they put you say talk put on more muscle, was trying to get bigger this offseason. You always kind of question what his speed gonna look like because that was one of his strengths. But he's been getting after guys the entire year. Poor Tim Settle. The only player that had like that that missed sack. I cannot believe Anthony Richardson shook him off that way. But the defense has been so good. I do think the yardage matters. Like you said, in today's NFL, quarterbacks throw the ball. But they're not throwing for over 200 yards. They're not running the ball all the time. I mean, they're having some... Jonathan Taylor had some success. This game rushed for 105 yards, but it took him 20 carries to get there. So the defense is, is the huge win for this season as down as we all feel about the Texans offense, we should feel very positive about the Texans defense. Yeah. The pass rush has been really good. And I mean, think about this yesterday. You didn't have Aziz El Shire. Devin white came in. I, honestly, I didn't notice Devin white that much, but he wasn't a liability considering he hasn't played to this point this year was inactive for all the games he was playing with the Eagles. So you had guys step up at linebacker and the defensive line, which is, getting a slightly more spry to Nico Autry with every single game. He had a deflected pass in this game that has Daniel Hunter, who had an incredible sack while a Colts offensive lineman was trying to pull him off of Anthony Richardson. Will Anderson is doing the same things that he's been doing too. The pass rush for this team is probably its strength. And and the real question is, is the offense ever going to catch up to where the defense is right now? But this is a pretty good point in the year to look at the Texans defense. I feel like as the season has gone on, they've gotten better. And 
if you're looking for anything to compliment on this unit, and you might be having a tough time doing that with the offense, the pass rush is it. It is really good, and it is universally respected across the NFL. I think they also the the ten for thirty two for Richardson. We we have to put in some context that he might be a bad quarterback, but you did have nine pass deflections in this game. Eric Murray was all over the place. Eric Murray a, was great. He was great in this That's game. That's the best that he's ever looked. Yeah, Kamari Lasseter, he had three pass deflections. You have an interception he, from Jalen Petrie. Lasseter them, needed to chill on that one play where he got totally toasted yes. and then started celebrating when Anthony Richardson misfired the ball. I hate it when defenders do that. I, I hate agree. it. And and I don't care if Kamari Lasseter is posting cool stuff on his Instagram story afterwards, which was this picture of uh, like 1930s Mickey Mouse reading a book that said how to kill. Like that's cool, and he's got yeah. the locksmith chain and all that stuff. Sorry, don't do a dance after that. Anyway, continue. No, Tyreek Tyreek Stevenson would be proud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just keep kicking me when I'm down. We haven't okay? even gone to that. Second. I'm just I mean, trying to be positive about Eric Murray. I like, right I like now. foreshadowing it for the whole. I, for I the can't whole wait. Show. We're just like yeah, just, I know. it's on the back of your mind because you know eventually it's gonna come. I know, but I love Eric Murray. Just the I he, he's I did not think he was a good football player. Uh been pleasantly surprised with what he's done this season at safety for the Houston Texans. So uh, a, a huge win for them to get some of these guys that are, you know, either kind of nobodies or guys you don't expect a ton from and are making an impact. Daniel Gautry, the only real negative of this game. I know you heard him on one of the highlights we played today. Did nothing again. <laughs> he had a deflected pass. He had a deflected pass. Yeah, that, that, one I'll take it. Hit. Look, he's 34. I know, but... He missed the first lot. six games of the year and he didn't practice in training camp. Anyone who thought he was going to give you results right away, I, I think you're crazy. Yeah, it's going to take some time. That's like a little result. Yeah, he's a rotational piece that's yeah. 34. I mean, I know he had 10 sacks last year, but he is a rotational piece. Don't measure your expectations, you know? When Mario Edwards is back, like, I don't know how many snaps Autry's going to get. I mean, is that, aren't they paying get like $10 million? Dollars? Hmm? Are they paying him like $10 million? Yeah, you're paying him for, you're paying him for the end of the year. I mean, yeah. yeah, I was gonna say, I think this might be more of a November, December, we'll see what we get in Autry because of what what Paul was saying that he missed all of the offseason. And yeah, he's at train camp on the sideline, not doing anything. And you can't bring him along slowly because you don't have Edwards for yep. some yeah. reason. But they've been they've been <laughs> so they've been so impressive. This this defense. I, I mean defense has been great. Yeah, because they're just getting it from different guys every week, whether it's Hunter, Anderson, Settle. I mean, Mario Edwards, when he was out there, and then the guys in the secondary, they're all contributing in a really positive way. It was nice to see Jalen Petrie get that it, first interception in two years. Mm -hmm. It was like that when they, we all knew it, but when they said it, it was just like, oh, yeah. The one nitpick is this it's, hey, the big plays, it's always won a game. I don't know how they lost Josh Downs the way that they did, but geez, that was bad. And Richardson did have a couple of throws that maybe were dropped by Colts to, uh, receivers or maybe a little bit off thrown. Um, whatever the case, this was, I think, a really good performance by the defense. So if you want to, if you want to brag about anything, get chesty about anything with this team being six and two, with all of the questions they have on offense, the defense, I think, is something you actually can be proud of. Very much agree. Yeah, so. yeah. I think Daniel Hunter was. I mean, he made. Uh, probably the biggest play of the game mm -hmm. and another super big play too. Like, so the two sacks you get from Hunter, we heard the Anderson sack like that. That is what this t defense was built to was built to be. Uh, they were after Richardson so much that he had to ask out, uh, which, I which know. The, you know what? They're the most successful pass rush in NFL history. They made a QB they, sub out of a game. Yes. Yeah. The, no, no, other quarterback in history has done that. Dude, let's hear Anthony Richardson after the game. Yeah. This is, this is the Colts quarterback. Oh my God. You can't say this. Man, it's hard. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, that was a lot of running right there, what I did. And uh, I don't think I was going to be able to go that next place. So I just, uh, you know, just told saying I just needed a break right there. Lying is hard. I'm not good at it. You got to say something else there. Got to say I felt dizzy. I, I or I couldn't hear the play call. Like just something to where you're like I'm hitting the well, helmet. They were trying to, on the broadcast like show that when he got tackled, he put his left hand down. And oh no, maybe that was a different point of the game when he hurt his wrist a little bit. I don't know. It's so hard to keep track of when he's hurt and when he's not hurt. When, when he's tired, just, yeah. but just lie. Just say I dinged up a little bit. I'm I'm good to go though. And even then. Dude, it's a third down in a closed game on the Texan side of the field. Uh, I think it was third and goal from the 23. Yeah. Which is also like, hey, 
they're not going to ask you to like, well, with Shane Steichen, you don't know for sure, but the, you're probably not going to have to run the ball here. The, it's probably just going to be a screen, a wide receiver screen or a handoff. Right. They they weren't aggressive when Flacco came in. They did some sort of a check down, but dude, yeah. you got to stay out there. You, you can't ever take a playoff. You're as a quarterback, you're expected to lie about concussions. Yeah, <laughs> you know, look at Josh Allen. Uh, <laughs> Tua. <laughs> Tua. I mean, even like like later in the game, like when the, when the mix and play happened, when he ran into Tank, and you could tell Tank was like catching his breath a little bit from probably just getting the wind knocked out of him. They're calling him out, and he's trying to wave off. Yeah. Bobby Slowick and trying to say, I know I'm staying in the game. I'm fine. They finally took him off the field. Like as a quarterback, you cannot leave the field and expect to keep the respect of your teammates when most teammates already think quarterbacks are soft in general. Yeah, it, it's a situation where I get that he was he exerted himself a lot, especially on that play oh, preceding did. it, where he shakes off. Um, 91. It was okay. Tim Settle. Tim yeah. Settle. He shakes him off. He run, run, is running around, gets hit uh, by a linebacker. And, but at the same time, I mean, it's unanimous with all the former players, either on the talk shows or on uh, on Twitter, where they're like, I've never seen a quarterback do this. And I haven't either. At that point, it is like, well, I get he was exerting himself. But Josh Allen exerts himself a lot on these plays. Cam Newton exerted himself for an entire career. Like Michael Vick. Michael Vick. Like all these guys. You're, Lamar Jackson. I mean, remember the Chiefs game where every drop back for Lamar Jackson was 15 seconds long because he had to avoid every rusher and then throw it to Isaiah Likely. Like, it's not crazy that a quarterback has to be, have some cardio uh, strength there. Mahomes in the Super Bowl against the Bucks. Yeah. Oh yeah, he was running for his life the, the whole game. game. Uh, he, yeah. He, he, sorry, dude. I mean, you, you got to stay in there. And Richardson, of all the quarterbacks, we're not talking about someone who's flabby right like baker yeah. mayfield or Jameis winston late I mean, career ben roethlisberger right exactly i mean richardson is is essentially a golden god out yeah. there the he, guy's got adonis bod like his, his combine measurables were like the same as like athletic tight end yeah like it was like he was he's a freak so it, it's a it's a bad look i don't think it takes away from the texans defensive performance